My name is Ben Hanley. I am a post-war and contemporary specialist. I've worked in the art market for nearly 25 years. Originally, my background and specialisation was old masters, but um, through my experience, I've moved into the contemporary market. Um, it's probably the most vibrant and um, energetic uh, area of the market at the moment. One of the most interesting experiences I've had in my career was I was about five years ago, I was asked to value a collection of contemporary art. Now, I went in totally blind. I wasn't given any instruction. I got to the, um, the address, to met the client, and he was very casual about the work, he, his, his collection. He didn't go into too into many details until he took me to an outhouse in his farm. He was in, in, in the Cambridgeshire area. And we went to the um, outhouse, and he pulled out a 20-foot ladder. So I had to climb, he put it against the wall, and I had to climb 20 feet up into a lock-up. When I went in there, there were 10 um, Warhol, Warhol paintings, numerous prints. There was one of the largest collections of um, David Hockney um, early prints in, um, in, in existence. They were later sold. Um, and I had to this day, that is one of the most bizarre situations. I mean, normally collections of that level are much, are much more professionally curated and such like. And because of the casualness of it, it's all stuck in my head and the quality. I mean, to, to, to see 10 Warhol paintings worth many millions of pounds casually uninsured and held up in, in, a, in a loft in a um, barn. Most bizarre situation ever. There are a number of, of factors that one needs to take into account when valuing a work of art. You can either if it's a contemporary artist, generally speaking, he is, he is represented by what's called the primary gallery, i.e. the main gallery that deals with his work. Clearly, one can go to the gallery and discuss the replacement value for a similar sort of work. Um, also, if the, if the artist has a very a vibrant and buoyant secondary market, i.e. works that are sold and traded at, at, at auction, one can look for comparables um, for similar works that they make on the secondary market. A combination of two, generally speaking, you can come up with um, a credible value. Clearly, condition and the saleability of a work or the desirability of a work, some subject matter sell, you know, are more commercial than others. If you have a portrait of, some, of a person, if it's a pretty woman, tends to make more money and is much more commercial and desirable than a portrait of, of a man. Unless, of course, that man is Winston Churchill or has some sort of um, uh, interesting fact about, about the sitter. Clearly, condition uh, has, a, has a major effect on, on the value of a work. Um, every, the, the, the better condition, uh, the better the, va the value. You have all collectors are looking for mint condition works. If there's, a, if there's a, an issue in that, well, then clearly that affects the price. The, me the different types of media um, that one's dealing with um, affect the, um, the importance of condition. For example, works on paper, they have a greater propensity to be damaged than, let's say, a, sc a bronze sculpture. Works on paper, they can fade, they can be ripped, they can be smudged. So, one has to take on board and analyse very closely um, condition um, when coming together with or coming up with a, um, a price point and a, an evaluation.